Sarcasm enhances creativity. Seriously? Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com with another look at some of the ways that we are winning. We've got that story plus two other ways you wouldn't expect to be helped. But first, drum circles can cure depression. Some benefits to making and dancing to music in a circle with your friends, family, and other community members are intuitive. Dancing is a physical activity that can create positive effects similar to other forms of aerobic exercise like releasing endorphins that elevate mood and act as natural analgesics. A communal drum circle also describes a kind of low-risk social event like attending a party full of people you've known for a long time without being too emotionally demanding and it's rewarding and personally affirmative. Now, as a hippie boy from West Virginia, I can tell you that sometimes drum circles can be terribly annoying, but they are very fundamental, and we've been making music as communities for millennia. Now, our cover story this week, Sarcasm Can Enhance Your Creativity, comes as actually all our stories do this week from Psychology Today via our buddy at Eric Moshe, one of our biggest supporters and newsers of the media monarchy kingdom. Now this article says a sarcastic remark during a creativity session says that something important has happened, the creative act. An idea is generated when two previously unrelated themes suddenly come together. So the humorous act is essentially the same process. A funny sarcastic comment kind of might mean that a really good idea is right around the corner. And now this article actually gets into ways that this can be used in marketing. Now you know that psychologists are figuring out ways to market to us and they've manufactured and engineered our consent. What if we look at some of those same tools that they use? That's a lot of what we talk about in alternative media is taking their tools and their rule books and blowing them wide open and figuring out the ways that they've been winning for so long and that hopefully we can apply those themes and memes and ways to learn to ourselves. Our third and final story this week of some of the simple, almost silly ways that you can help yourself. Seeing beautiful things has therapeutic benefits, and you can see this time and time again. Studies show that exposure to images of nature, as well as actual nature, enhances your healing. You can get that from Scientific American. Lightheartedness helps you cope. Sometimes we just need to float above it all. That's on Psychology Today. Seemingly superficial engagement can have profound implications. Your unique distractions might be clues to some of your needs. Pleasure is a need. Exposure to art also and culture builds resilience, enhances healing, and seeds intellectual creativity. More on that at artandhealing.org. So again, it takes us so long to work our way all the way around to come back to the very fundamental, simple things. Community, food, making your own things, being happy, playing music, dancing, loving, all of those things are positive for us. Some of the other ways that we are winning under hashtag good news next week, just like our previous episode where Belgians hunted books instead of Pokemons, the Lisbon Library drop-lifted thousands of books all throughout town in an effort to get people back into reading. Now, longtime listeners of Media Monarchy may have heard me use that term drop-lift before. There was an album several years ago made of entirely copyright-infringing plunder phonics kind of music, mashups, illegal samples, like a Negative Land or Girl Talk of the like. They called it the Drop-Lift Project and they, it's the opposite of shoplifting. Instead of taking something from a store, you're going into a store and placing something in there that doesn't belong there. So it's a fantastic way to culture jam. And this library in Lisbon basically had thousands of extra books, duplicates and things, and they're just drop lifting them all over the city. So people hit a bitch and go on, a book. Another interesting note, our buddy Jared at RadioConfluence.com has been traveling around and he was in Nashville recently. And not only did he go pick up the new Jack White acoustic album at Third Man Records, but what do they have out front of Third Man Records in Nashville? A free little library. They are popping up all over the place. I've mentioned them here in the neighborhood. We've talked about them here on the episodes. And you've told us that you're seeing them pop up around your town as well free little libraries, free little pantries, community fridges. The ideas we talk about here on Good News Next Week, we're not the ones planting them. 
it's just a part of the zeitgeist and people are all realizing it at the same time. Which is fantastic. Oregon County, that's Deschutes County to be precise, is reviving a citizens advisory panel for cops. That would be the citizens telling the police what they should and shouldn't do. Imagine that. Old Japanese gas stations being converted into ramen joints. And three good news animal stories as Frankie is running around here meowing. It's probably our next to last episode of Good News next week. Outdoor for summer. As soon as fall comes, we'll head back inside and you might get Frankie more in the background more on those episodes. But three good news animal stories here to wrap up on. Most of the world's humpback whale population no longer endangered. Scotland becomes the first UK country to ban wild animals in circuses. And giant pandas taken off global endangered lists as their population rebounds. So those are just some of the ways that we are winning, and if you've got some solutions-oriented stories from your town, you can tweet them using hashtag goodnewsnextweek, or you can always reach out to me, james, at mediamonarchy.com. Like my new friends Tyler and Renee did. A huge thanks to them. They were passing through Portland this past week, wanted to meet up for a quick, quick beverage last night. It was fantastic. It's great to meet people IRL in real life, because remember, they gave us all of this technology. They can also take it away very quickly. And if we don't make real world connections, we might not have any if the grid fails. And that's what they want us to be afraid of. Fear is how they get us to do lots of things. So it is a war on your mind. And one of the best ways to wage that war is with like-minded people. And as we said at the beginning, community. This has been episode 32 of Good News Next Week. I'm James Evan Pilato from MediaMonarchy.com reminding you, as always, my friends, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care.